Round one. Fight. Welcome back to Game Gentlemen. We're premiering a new set as well as a new video series this week. In our new series, we'll be testing gaming peripherals and accessories at different price points to see if you need to spend up big to get the best bang for your buck. Think of it like BuzzFeed's worth it, only for gaming. But of course, we don't want to steal their formula, so we'll be putting a Game Gentleman twist on things. Throughout the series, anywhere we can, at least one of the three options will be a DIY. For the launch of our new series, we're going to be testing PlayStation 4 controllers. We'll be testing cheap clip-on accessories, a Frankenstein's Monster DIY controller, and our elite level controller, the Astro C40. We're going to take you through the setup of each controller and where we source the parts, and then we're going to be testing them against a driving game, a fighting game, a third-person shooter, and of course, what these things were made for, a first-person shooter. At the end of all of this, we'll give you our impressions and let you know which one was the best bang for your buck. As always, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Before we begin, we just want to clarify that this video was not sponsored by any of the products you see, and everything is being purchased using our own money. And with that in mind, this is Game Gentleman, and you're watching Play Tested. We start off this episode with our low cost controller, or what we're calling the noob option. The idea behind the noob controller was to see if those clip on accessories that you see in your local games retailer actually make a difference to how you play your game. The noob controller that you'll see in this video is actually version 2.0 of our controller. We had a launch Series 1 DualShock 4 controller laying around gathering dust, which was actually one of the inspirations for this video. We went ahead and fitted out all of the accessories, including gluing down the trigger stops which didn't quite fit, before we tested if the controller was still fully functioning. Turns out the D-pad was busted and there was no going back, so we had to move on to plan B. The parts we used for Noob Controller 1.0 included this Control Freak XP Performance Grip and this generic FPS Accessories Pack, which included trigger caps and thumb grips at different heights. As we mentioned earlier, the trigger caps didn't fit our Series 1 DualShock controller, and we thought we were being smart when we decided to glue them on. We didn't want to wait another few weeks for new Amazon deliveries, so when we had to move on to Noob Controller 2.0, we went down to our local EB Games and purchased these lizard skin grips, and then onto JB Hi-Fi to buy our trigger caps. JB don't have the trigger caps listed on their website, so here's the same product from a different retailer. From a gameplay perspective, we immediately noticed that we had to be very careful not to push too hard on the trigger caps, otherwise they would immediately fall off. When this happened to us while we were playing through Street Fighter, we could probably blame our enthusiastic but unskilled button mashing playstyle. But when it happened to us on both aiming and shooting in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, it was no longer excusable. We found the taller thumbsticks did give us better range of movement and precision in aiming on both Call of Duty and Uncharted, and in steering while playing Wipeout. Overall, the Noob Controller does its job, but not much else. The thumb grips provided a little more tactile response, and while it was nice that we could swap them out for different heights and get better range of movement, they never really felt quite right. The trigger caps were an absolute disaster. From the first trigger caps we bought, which didn't fit our original controller and had to be glued down, to the updated grips which required double-sided tape and would fall off at anything more than a gentle button press. The real winner from the Noob controller, and probably the only thing we'll keep from the test, is this lizard skin grip. It provides a textured feel to the DualShock 4's handles and goes a little way in combating sweaty gamer hands. Next up, we move on to our Frankenstein's Monster DIY Mod Controller. The idea behind this controller was to land somewhere between the cheap clip-on accessories of the mod controller and the eye-watering price point of the Elite controller, while still retaining some of its features such as programmable back buttons, trigger stops, and removable analog sticks. Again, we looked to Amazon to source all of the parts for our DIY build. To provide us with the programmable back buttons and trigger stops, we opted for this extreme rate back shell with remap kit in matte black, we complemented this with Extreme Rate's magnetic button set, which provides different button height, D-pad, and analog stick options, reminiscent of Xbox's Elite controller. We paired this with these Thompson metal triggers, which are a little longer than the standard DualShock 4, and to complete the look, we also purchased this matte black front shell. As is the nature with DIY, this was by far the most work out of all three controllers, 
And we will admit it was pretty daunting to pull apart a perfectly good working controller, especially after the failure of Noob Controller 1.0, where we didn't have a backup plan. We did try and film the teardown and retrofit of the custom parts, which you'll see in the bottom corner, but unfortunately the battery died about three quarters of the way through the build, so we won't be including the full details. We also found that the matte black front shell that we bought from Amazon didn't quite clip together with our custom back housing, so we had to opt for our original DualShock 4 gloss black front. From a gameplay perspective, the swappable parts gave us a lot of options and freedom for each of the titles. We had different height face buttons for punching kicks in Street Fighter, along with the circular D-pad, which wasn't always stable. We used the removable, tall analog stick for steering in Wipeout and for aiming in Call of Duty and Uncharted, while the trigger stops really helped increase aiming and firing speed in both Uncharted and Call of Duty, and we really felt a huge improvement in our performance across both titles. We mapped the programmable back buttons to heavy attacks in Street Fighter, accelerate and fire weapons in Wipeout, melee and pick up items in Uncharted, and reload and crouch in Call of Duty. Overall, we're pretty happy with our mod controller. There are a few gripes like the circle pad sitting a little too high and slipping off its magnets when we were too enthusiastic playing Street Fighter. However, unlike the noob controller, most of the time this was pretty easy to slide back in place. The other thing we noted was that the face buttons are a little hard to replace. With the magnets being so strong and the metal buttons being so slippery, quite often we had to use tweezers or a small screwdriver to be able to get the leverage we needed. The analog sticks themselves were a breeze to replace and the tall thumbstick actually sat higher than any of the competition. The back buttons were relatively easy to program and gave a really satisfying click when being pressed in. Overall, assembly was quite easy to manage, with little more than a screwdriver required. However, those with some soldering iron skills could also program the L3, R3, and touchpad buttons if they wanted to. Finally, we move on to our Elite controller. While we could have picked any Elite controller for this test, such as the Razer Raiju, Thrustmaster Eswap, Scuff Infinity, or the Nacon Revolution, stock availability pointed us to the Astro C40. The C40 bills itself as a high quality pro controller for the serious gamer. There's really not much to cover in regard to individual parts with the C40, so instead we'll give you some more detailed impressions along with some clips from our unboxing of the controller. Unlike some of the other elite level controllers, the C40 is somewhat customizable with players being able to unscrew the faceplate and swap the analog sticks and D-pad to play in either a symmetrical or offset control profile. The C40 can be used both wired and wirelessly, comes with swappable analog sticks and programmable back buttons which can be stored on two separate profiles. Handy for the type of person who switches back and forth between games. The feel of the controller is quite impressive and after taking it out of its hard case, it's immediately apparent that you're dealing with something more premium than the standard DualShock 4 or any of the controllers we're testing in this video. The controller is weighty without feeling heavy, is comfortable to hold, and all of the buttons have a satisfying responsiveness. I don't know if it's just because this was new out of the box, but the analog sticks also felt tighter compared to a DualShock 4. The back buttons are large and sit comfortably under the fingers, and the dedicated program button makes swapping configurations very easy. It is hard to emphasize just how premium this controller actually feels. We used a lot of the same programming as what we did on the mod controller for each of the games, and while we can't say that we saw any significant improvement in our performance on Street Fighter, we did beat our lap record on Wipeout, and the trigger stops and interchangeable analog stick really came into their own on both Uncharted 4 and Call of Duty. As we've mentioned a few times on this video, the Astro C40 is a truly premium controller, but then again for its price, it really should be. At around $50 less than a PS4 Slim, this one is a particularly hard purchase to justify, particularly with the PlayStation 5 focusing so heavily on the DualSense, leaving premium controllers like this stuck playing PS4 titles. It's also hard to justify unless you're a hardcore FPS player. We found the back buttons little more than a nice to have during our playthroughs of Uncharted 4 and Wipeout, and while they did see a little more action in Street Fighter V, we wouldn't say that it was life-changing enough not to fall back to the shoulder buttons every now and then. With all that being said, if you're a dedicated FPS player and not planning to pick up the PlayStation 5 for a while, then this may be the controller for you. Before we wrap up, in order to get an appreciation for these controllers truly head-to-head, -head, please enjoy this short clip from our testing on Modern Warfare 2's campaign mode. We're getting a 
Get in a helicopter! Head through the gate to the market! Move! So now it's time to announce the winner of our very first episode of Playtested. While the Astro C40 was head and shoulders above the competition in terms of its feel, responsiveness and playability, we really struggled to justify its price point. So with that in mind, we're going to have to give it to our very own Frankenstein's monster, the DIY Mod Controller. If you're even the slightest bit handy with a precision screwdriver, this is a collection of mods that are really worth your time. And as you can see from the breakdown, even if you chose to copy all of the mods that we did, you're still coming in at under half the price of the Elite Level A40 controller. So that's our first episode of Playtested. What gaming accessories and peripherals would you like us to test next? Let us know in the comments below. While you're in the comments, let us know what you thought of the new format. We like trying out different ideas and bringing you new videos each and every week. And your feedback really helps to shape this channel. This has been Game Gentleman, and thanks for watching.